Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about one of the most common dental problems that is experienced by most adults as well as young people and that is irreversible pulpitis. Firstly, we'll talk about what actually is pulpitis, then talking about irreversible pulpitis, then talking about clinical features of irreversible pulpitis, clinical findings, radiographical features, and then finally, we'll talk about the different management options that are available for treating irreversible pulpitis. So let's get started. Firstly, talking about some basic facts about pulp. Pulp is a vital structure of tooth. As you can see in this diagram, this is your pulp. It is encased by this dentine and then the most outer layer of the tooth that is enamel. The pulp is that only vital structure that is present in the tooth and it performs various functions for example nutrition formation of dentine innervation and defense mechanism of our teeth as well because it has blood vessels sometimes lymphatic and nerves so different cells are present which helps fight different bacteria viruses that are present in the tooth now when this pulp is inflamed it is known as pulpitis now this pulpitis are of two types either the pulpitis is reversible or the pulpitis is irreversible now irreversible pulpitis is further divided into two parts it is either acute irreversible pulpitis or it is chronic irreversible pulpitis as the name suggests reversible pulpitis can be reversed and the pulp can be saved but when a patient presents to us with irreversible pulpitis as the name suggests the pulp can no longer be saved because the damage is done beyond repair so in that case for example root canal therapy or treatment is performed in order to save the tooth. Now talking about how actually irreversible pulpitis is formed, there are different etiological factors that are associated with irreversible pulpitis. The most common factor is bacterial causes and it includes caries because initially a small lesion or white spot lesion is formed, converts into a bigger and bigger lesion and then finally it invades the innermost layer of the tooth that is pulp. Sometimes periodontal breakdown can also lead to pulpitis. For example, there is gum recession and then root caries form and that can also lead to invasion inside the pulp. Then next is tooth fracture. Sometimes horizontal or vertical tooth fracture can expose the pulp. In case of vertical fractures, the only treatment option in most of the cases that is available is simply extraction. But in horizontal fractures, Pulp can be exposed and sometimes root canal therapy can be performed in such patients. Thirdly, there are chemical injuries. Certain very acidic agents are used in teeth that can lead to inflammation of pulp. Fourth, we have mechanical wear, which includes tooth wear such as mainly attrition, erosion, abrasion. And sometimes uh, the dentist may expose the pulp accidentally, especially during cavity preparation, which also includes thermal injuries. In that case also, during cavity preparation, the pulp can be exposed. Now moving on towards the clinical features of patients suffering from irreversible pulpitis, it is mainly divided into two parts. Firstly, the clinical features are in early stage and then in late stage. Firstly, we'll talk about the early stage. In that case, there is sudden pain which is mainly caused by cold and sweet things or foods that a patient consumes. Now when the pain arises, it is continuous and after the removal of stimulus the pain continues it doesn't resolve for some time it does continue and the pain may come and go spontaneously for example a person bites on that tooth during eating and then this pain can arise and then it continues for a longer period of time now describing what actually pain is experienced by the patient it is sharp shooting piercing and most of the time severe so these are the descriptive terms that the patient uses in order to describe the pain that the patient is experiencing. And mo in most of the cases, the pain exacerbates when the patient is lying down, especially during sleep, and change of position. When the person is sleeping, especially during that time when the blood flow in the pulp vessel increases, so this pain of irreversible pulpitis increases. As you can see in this picture this is a large cavity that is present and you have to perform a radiograph in order to confirm that there is irreversible pulpitis and these all features may or may not be present in a person suffering from irreversible pulpitis but most of these features are present now moving on towards the late stage presentations of irreversible pulpitis 
now since the lesion is progressing forward the pain is now severe and throbbing pain this pain as the patient describes is beyond their experience and their limitations to tolerate it the pain often awakens the patient at night when the patient tries to sleep and when the blood flow in the pulp vessel increases so pain increases and that awakens the patient and then when patient awakes it makes it difficult to sleep at night the pain at this stage which is late stage it is increased by heat but sometimes applying cold things relieves that pain now when tooth is tapped for example with the back of the dental mirror it is tender to percussion and this pain of irreversible pulpitis cannot be located to an specific tooth by the patient so it is present around the jaws neck and ear the pain radiates to all these structures for example it may radiate to only jaw neck ear or in combination of either of these four things now there are certain clinical differences that are associated with reversible pulpitis which can be treated and the pulp can be saved and irreversible pulpitis in that case the pulp has to be removed in reversible pulpitis the pain is mostly traceable to stimulus but in case of irreversible pulpitis a patient cannot trace where the actually pain is starting from and the pain is more severe as compared to reversible pulpitis in reversible pulpitis air and cold induces pain and worsens the pain more and the pain duration is also shorter as compared to irreversible pulpitis the pain lasts longer and pain may start with stimulus or without stimulus it just starts suddenly so these are some clinical differences between reversible pulpitis and irreversible pulpitis now after taking a thorough history from the patient about pain medical history dental history and social history now on performing intraoral examination some clinical findings can be appreciated in a patient suffering from irreversible pulpitis firstly talking about what we actually see in a patient's mouth the tooth that is suspected to be the source of pain for the patient there may be a cavity present a fracture can be present and these things can be associated with swelling there can be a sinus tract and sometimes hyperocclusion as well so when we palpate that tooth that is suspected to be causing irreversible pulpitis it is often sensitive and when we percuss with the back of the dental mirror it is sensitive in terms of mobility of that suspected tooth it is mostly not present but it is only present when the that tooth in particular is periodontally weakened as well now checking the thermal response of that tooth it is often sensitive to hot and cold stimulus electric pulp testing also responds positively because still the pulp is vital the pulp is non vital in case the pulp has been necrosed radiographically not much features can be appreciated but sometimes the pdl can be thickened so these are the some clinical findings which can be appreciated in a person suffering from irreversible pulpitis as you can see in this clinical picture as well this is the cavity that is present in a tooth and all these features may or may not be appreciated but most of these features clinical findings can be appreciated in this picture these are the two radiographs that you can see and in this case firstly talking about this first picture this is a radiolucent area that is present and it is near the pulp so this might be reversible pulpitis so clinical examination and history is important to arrive at a definitive diagnosis in the second picture this radiolucent area is almost near the pulp so this may present as early stage irreversible pulpitis so before you make a final diagnosis radiograph is very important so that you can know whether the pulp is involved or not irreversible pulpitis can be further divided as we have talked before into acute pulpitis and chronic pulpitis basically irreversible pulpitis pain starts as acute pulpitis but if you don't treat acute pulpitis it eventually leads to chronic pulpitis so firstly we'll talk about acute pulpitis and its management it is a type of irreversible pulpitis and it often comes when the patient is in reversible pulpitis stage but treatment is neglected so it leads to acute irreversible pulpitis and mostly it is associated with large carious lesions as we have seen in pictures before and sometimes defective restorations can also lead to this type of pulpitis and sometimes dentists may accidentally expose the pulp now the pain of acute pulpitis is very severe and when you even when you remove the stimulus the pain is present and the patient is very disturbed by this pain now talking about the different treatment options that are available in a patient suffering from acute irreversible pulpitis 
Sometimes pulpotomy can be performed, especially during the early stages of acute irreversible pulpitis. In pulpotomy, a section of coronal pulp is removed. As you can see, this is your pulp, coronal pulp, especially that is inflamed, and this is the carious lesion. And then, when the coronal pulp has been removed, in this case, only radicular pulp is remaining. So, this is known as pulpotomy. Sometimes this can be carried out. Second is promoting calcification. Calcification helps in treating such lesions. And then finally, the most effective and the present treatment that is offered to the patient is root canal treatment. In root canal treatment, basically this for example is a carious lesion. It is entirely removed with the dental handpiece as you can see. It is removed and then endodontic files are used to remove these pulp that is present and then finally GP which is an inert material gutta percha that is placed inside these and a crown is placed. So this is an entire root canal therapy and it is most commonly used to save a tooth that has been endodontically compromised. Lastly talking about chronic irreversible pulpitis it basically transits from acute irreversible pulpitis and if you neglect treatment in that stage it finally leads to chronic irreversible pulpitis. It may arise either with episodes of acute pulpitis or without episodes of acute pulpitis. In chronic irreversible pulpitis, the pulp may die spontaneously without you even knowing that some pain is present or not. Now, in this case, periapical periodontitis can be present. The periodontium that is present around the tooth, it may lead to its inflammation and then further complications may develop. Now, in this case, the pain is continuously present most of the time and it is often dull as compared to acute pulpitis where the pain was very severe and the final treatment option and the most effective treatment option for chronic pulpitis irreversibly damaged is root canal therapy that we have discussed before and it is it effectively maintains the tooth for at least 10 to 15 years so in this video we talked about irreversible pulpitis starting from introduction some basic facts about irreversible pulpitis and dividing the irreversible pulpitis into acute and chronic and pulpitis itself is divided into reversible and irreversible and we focused on irreversible pulpitis in this video and then we talked about etiological factors clinical features clinical findings that a dentist can appreciate in a person suffering from irreversible pulpitis and then finally we talked about different management options that are available in a person suffering from acute irreversible pulpitis and chronic irreversible pulpitis so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time